In this video, we're going to learn how to do a couple of different things in R Commander. We're going to do reverse coding, calculate Chromebox Alpha, we're going to compute scale scores, and then finally we will create a variable that is a median split. So we'll, we'll create high and low groups for a continuous variable. So let's start by opening up our program. And from here we need to load our commander, so go to Packages, Load Package, and select our commander. Double clicking works just fine. So now we have our R Commander window. So the first thing we need to do is to load our data set. And we're going to use a data set that has items for assessing extraversion. So click on Data, Import Data from Text File Clipboard or URL because our data is in a comma delimited file. The default name is Data Set. We'll just leave it as that. May, we need to change the field separator to commas and then click on OK. And now mine is already pointing to the folder that I have the data set in, so you need to find the right folder. And then AXT item data is what we'll be using, so double click on that. And then we can click on view data set to see what this looks like. So we have subject number, there are three different conditions. There's a positive condition, a negative condition, and a neutral condition. We won't be using that today. There's age, there's gender, and then we have a subset of the BFI items. The BFI stands for Big Five Inventory, which is a 44-item measure of the Big Five traits of personality. So these are just the extraversion items. Notice we have a couple of missing. NA stands for missing data within R, so we have a couple of missing values. So let's close that. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the structure of our data to make sure that it was read in the way that we intended it. So if you type STR and then the name of the data set, which is data set with a capital D, you have to have capitalization right, and then click the submit button. Here it tells us what it did with our data set when it read it in. So everything is an integer variable, which means it's a number that has meaning. Here we can see it read in that missing value. So we notice that for subject, that's fine. For condition and for gender, though, these aren't integers. These are factors. So we can change those to factors. So these are nominal variables where the numbers are assigning categories that don't actually have meaning in and of themselves. So we can do that by going to data. Manage Variables and Active Data Sets, and then Convert Numeric Variables to Factors. And so let's just do Gender. So go down, click on Gender, and then New Variable Name or Prefix for Multiple Variables. So let's call this something different. If we don't call it something different, it's going to write over the variable we have there. So it's good to call it something different, so let's call it F gender. So we know that's the factor variable for gender. We can supply level names or use numbers. If we change this to use numbers, it'll just keep the ones and twos, but if we supply level names, then we can type in male and female. So that's useful. You don't have to remember what one and two mean. So click OK. And then here it gives you the numeric value levels that are possible. So for one, we're going to type in male. And for two, female, click OK. So if you want to see what that looks like, you can view your data set again. If you go over to the end, now we have this new variable F gender that's either male or female. So ones for gender are now male, and two for our original gender variable are now female. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to do reverse coding. So this means if you have, for example, this is a 1 to 5 scale. If you reverse code it, it means your 1 becomes a 5, your 2 becomes a 4, 3 stays the same. So you're just flipping the way that the scale is working. So click on Data, Manage Variables, and Active Data Set, 
and recode variables. And then select the variables you want to recode. In this case, we only need to recode the items that are reverse scored for our scale. So that's items six. And then click on control to select more than one item. The other ones are 21 and 31. And then new variable name or prefix. So this is going to add a prefix since we have multiple variables to recode. So for the prefix, we could do just a capital R or rev for reverse, whatever is going to make make it that you can remember. The check, make each new variable a factor. We don't want these to be factors. We want them to keep it as numeric. So let's uncheck that. And then recode directives. So again, it's a five point scale. So one is going to become five. Two is going to become four. Three stays the same, but we need to tell it that. Four becomes two and five becomes one. So we've told it what to do. We click OK. And now we can view our data set again. And now if we scroll to the right, we have these new variables, rev, BFI 6, 21, and 31, and we can check, make sure it worked right. So the original was 3, and the recoded is 3. That one doesn't change. The original for 21 was 1, the recoded was 5. So that worked. It's always good to make sure it's doing what you think it's doing behind the scenes. Other things you can do with recoding, you might want to not want to go just from one value to another. So let's look at some other options, collected data, managed variables, an active data set, and recode variables. So instead of doing these kinds of directives, you can do other things in this section. So for example, if you had several values and you did want to compute a new factor, so maybe you want 1 and 2 to be a low score, 3 to be medium, and 4 and 5 to be high. So you could say 1 colon 2 and colon in R is like a through sign. So variables 1 through 2 equal, and then in parentheses, that's going to be our low group. Variable 3 equals our medium group. And variables 4 through 5 are going to be our high group. So let's give this a different prefix. So now we have F3, so a factor with three levels. Click OK. View the data set. For, so I did it for all three of these variables again, 6, 21, and 31, and we have medium, low, and high scores. All right, the next thing we're going to do is calculate Chromebox Alpha, and this is one way to assess the internal reliability of the items that we want to create a scale out of. So we want to make sure that that's high enough to combine all of the items we're interested in. So we click on Statistics, Dimensional Analysis, and then Scale Reliability. And we select the items that we want to put in there. So in this case, we want BFI 1, we want all three of the reverse scored items, 621 and 31. Oh, we lost one, so let's click on that again. You gotta hold down control. And then the other items we didn't have to reverse score were 11, 16, 26, and 36. So those are the items in our scale. We click OK. And here is our output. So our alpha reliability is 0.8378. We would report two decimal places. So we would report this as 0.84. And then it also tells you what happens if you delete each item. So if we deleted item 1, the overall alpha would be 0.82. So we're getting lower because we're taking out a good item. So we would want to leave that in. And also it tells you the item total correlation. So how well item one correlates with the total score not including that item. So as you can see, all of these items are good because they all have pretty substantial item total correlations. And if we get rid of any item, it decreases the overall reliability. So this is a good scale. 
And again, all you would need to report from this is that Chromebox Alpha equals 0.84. So now we're going to compute scale scores. So again, let's go to Data, Manage Variables in Active Data Set, and Compute New Variable. And so now what we're going to do is we want to compute the average for these items, which will give us the extra virgin scale score. So let's call it ext.avg, extra virgin average. And so we can put the expression in here that we want. So we're going to compute the average. And so we do it the long math way in here. So it's going to be BFI1, and you can double click on the variable name and then use your keyboard to do the other things, plus, and then six was reverse coded, so we need to go down and find rev BFI six plus BFI 11 plus 16 plus 21 reverse coded. Make sure that went over there. Okay, that looks good plus 26 plus 31 reverse coded plus 36 whoops we forgot the plus sign here and then for the average, we want to divide that sum by our number of items. So we have eight items. And then we click OK. And here we can see the items more easily. We can double check, make sure we got it right. Item 1, 6 reverse scored, 11, 16, 21 reverse scored, 26, 31 reverse scored. Oops, we got that one in there twice. Good thing we double checked, so we need to go fix that. We need to take that one out. So let's go back to data, manage variables, compute new variable. Now there's a memory in here, so we can just go take out the part that we did incorrectly, take out that extra 31, click OK. It's going to ask us if we want to overwrite that variable. We do, because we're fixing it. That's fine. Okay, so now we double check again. We have just 131, and it's reverse score. That's the way it should be, and then 36. And we still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight variables. Okay, so that's what it needs to do. Let's view our data set and make sure it looks the way we want it to. So here we have extraversion.average, and the values. Now notice, for people who had a missing value that this is missing here. So it's not calculating the average for these participants. Sometimes you want to compute a sum instead of an average. So let's just look at that quickly. Manage variables, compute new variables. So if we want to do a sum instead of extraversion average, we can do extraversion.sum. And the only thing we will need to change in our expression is to not divide this sum by 8. We want the actual sum, not the average. So we click OK, view data set, and here's our extraversion.sum column. Again, people who had missing items are missing values here as well. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is figure out how to do a median split. So first we need to figure out what our median is. So we can just use uh, the script window for this. Notice as we've been doing things, things have been happening in the script window. It's always showing us what the menus are doing. But this is a really easy command. So to find the median, we type in the word median, open parenthesis, the name of the data set that the variable is in, which is data set, the capital D, and then a money sign and the name of the variable, which is ext.avg. So this tells R to look in the data set called data set for the variable called ext.avg. And then the other thing to think about is that we have a couple of missing values. So if we want R to be able to compute the median, he 
even with those missing values in there, we need to tell it a little bit extra. We need to tell it na.rm equals true. So this is, and true is in all caps, close parenthesis. And so this is telling R to not worry about the missing data. So throw out the missing data, but calculate the median on everything else. So click Submit. And down here, our median is 3.5. So now when we do a median split, we can have one group that's 3.5 or higher, and the other group that's 3.5 or lower. So we just need to recode the data again. So data, manage variables and active data set, recode variables. Let's go ahead and click reset, just get it back to the defaults where it starts. That's good if you've done something more complicated. And so we want ext avg is the variable we're interested in. New variable name. So our new variable, let's call it ext dot med split, median split. Make each new variable a factor. Now we do want this to be a factor because we're going to have a low group and a high group. So our low group, what you can do here is you can type in lo colon 3.5. So this will give you the lowest score up to 3.5 equals low. And then we can do 3.51, so just a little bit higher than 3.5, through high equals our high group. So notice here we have to have low and high in double quotes. Click OK. Let's view our data set. So now we have this last variable, extraversion median split. We have a couple of high scores, this NA score followed through, a couple of low scores. So now we have divided this variable into either high or low, and then we can use this in something like an independent samples t-test if we wanted to compare high versus low levels of extraversion on some other variable, this median split would allow us to do that. So that is the end of what I'm going to show you today.